Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing you the next painting tutorial in the Black Templars playlist, this time on the Humble Neophyte. So obviously this miniature will share many of the same painting techniques as the previous video, which was the fully power armored uh, Black Templar Marine. Um, with the exception, there's a lot more leather, he's got his bare arms and his face, um, so we're going to be focusing on those particular details in the painting video today. I will go through everything else as well, just in case you haven't seen the other video. We will still learn all the uh, tools, um, tips and tricks that you'll need to uh, get a Black Templar's Marine painted up using this tutorial. Um, stick around to the end where I'll show you some uh, better pictures and some rotating images of the model. Um, and uh, yeah, enjoy! Okay guys, like the power armored video, we start with exactly the same spraying technique, which is we do an all over coat of chaos black spray, and then we do a zenithal of lead belcher. This gives us a fantastic base coat to do the kind of metallic armor um, that's uh, quite famous on Space Marines. After that, we move over to the Black Templar contrast paint, and we're gonna apply this to all of the uh, metallic parts of the miniature. So all the armor panels all across the miniature are gonna get a solid coat of contrast black Templar. All the other parts of the miniature are gonna get painted over, so you don't need to be particularly careful with this uh, stage, um, just get it on. And this is it with the black Templar contrast paint dried. You can see how smooth that has actually dried onto all the different armor panels. And from here, we are going to uh, give the armor another uh, light, very light dry brush of lead belcher just to catch the edges again. We do this so then we put the final layer of uh, null oil wash over the armor. Um, it acts like highlighting, uh, edge highlighting on the armor. So very lightly, just catch those edges. I do it at this stage now because I'm gonna be doing the base coats on all the other parts of the miniature. And up to dry brushing at the end after that would uh, hit all the wrong spots, whereas it doesn't really matter here. Well, like I said, we're going to move on to all the other base coats now. So the first one we're going to do is Zandri Dust. And this is for his tabard and his shoulder pauldrons. It's going to take you uh, two thin coats. Um, to get a smooth layer of Zandri dust over the metallic -y black that's left over from the previous stages. So just take your time. I really am going to have to spray my brushes black or something, get rid of all the words so my camera stops focusing on them. A lot of people leave the Black Templar shoulder pads off, spray them separately, and then... Um, stick them on afterwards. I know this is an easier way to do it. It's not a bad way to do it. I just like keeping the metallic crosses, the black colored crosses on their shoulders, exactly the same color black as the armor, which I think would be really hard to do um, after the fact. So I prefer to take my time and paint around them with the creamy color. So the next color we have is Rhinox Hide. And we're gonna be using this to base coat all of the leather parts of the miniature, which is actually the boots, gloves, and the belt that goes around his midriff. We also have like uh, grenade pouches and stuff like that. They're all gonna get a quick coat uh, of Rhinox hide. Next, we're gonna move over to Retributor Armor. And this is the base coat that's going across the Aquila on his chest. What I try and do is get a solid coat of Retribute Armor Gold across his chest. Nothing crazy. You do want to have a fine brush and you want to take your time. You do not want to hit the gold on any of the black armor. It will stick out like a sore thumb. So this is one part of the miniature that you really do need to take your time and get this right. Otherwise, it's, it's just, yeah, it's just bad. There's the Aquila done, nice and neatly on his chest. Back to Lead Belcher. This time not as a dry brush, but as a layering or base coating. Um, and it's to base coat all the other metallic parts of the miniature that uh, the spray just didn't give a, a good enough coat. Like I said, we do a Zenithal Prime with that. So with this, we wanna go in and actually hit all of the metallic parts. Um, 
So all of the parts of the pistol that aren't going to be like not the casing, we're gonna do that a different color in a moment. And then move over to the chain blade and do all of the teeth and the cross guard of the chain blade um, with that metallic color as well. Just to make that color a little bit more solid. You can see the difference between the body of the chainsaw and the teeth now. Now we're going to move on to corn red. And this is the base coat, the gun casing and the chainsword casing. All you're going to do is take your time. Obviously we've base coated the metallics properly, so we don't want to be hitting any of those. You can do weapons and stuff like that as all metallic, like a, like a real gun is. Um, but I do think that the casing color just adds a little bit extra to the miniature. Makes it stand out. As you can see here, it makes quite the difference. Black and cream are quite dull colors, so that, that pinch of red is a, really adds something. Now onto the Bugman's Glow. This is the bit that we haven't covered in the previous um, Black Templar video as there was no skin showing. And all you're trying to do here is get a solid coat of Bugman's glow across all of the skin. That is the entire face. He's got a little bit of hair on the top of his head, but around the back is bald as well. So just make sure you get around the entire part, depending on what hair scheme the miniature you're painting has. And then he's got those big bare arms from kind of the forearm up. Um, initially, I thought they went all the way up to the shoulder, but they don't. The shoulder's actually covered a little bit as well. So I accidentally painted the wrong bit and had to wash that off. So you guys make sure you don't do that. Next, a bit of Screamer Pink. And this is just to base coat the handle of the chain sword. Just a nice complementary color to the rest of the scheme. Okay, now we have it. The miniature is fully base coated ready for its all over wash. And for this one, we're gonna be using Nolan Oil. This finishes off the armor entirely. So from the armor, what we did was spray black, spray silver, contrast black, light dry brush to silver again, and then Nolan Oil. And that is literally the entire process for painting black armor. Like painting these miniatures, uh, Black Templars, Raven Guard, all those kind of miniatures, with lots of black armor. The slowest part of painting them is getting that armor right. So many tutorials tell you to do multiple layers of edge highlighting, which it could take up to an hour per miniature. It may look better, slightly, but I know time, it's more efficient this way. Uh, if you have an army to get through, I feel like this is a great alternative to the edge highlighting technique. So yeah, continue with the Nolan Oil, get it all over the body. Here it is fully applied. As you can see, I haven't gone too thick. I haven't darkened down things too bad, but just added that nice bit of depth. Here is the Nolan Oil I'll Dry. I've also thrown the uh, um, Martian Iron Crust on the base. That takes a long time to dry, so I put a coat of that on while the wash was on, just to like, get the uh, drying time to uh, start ticking over. So next thing we're gonna do is go to Yashapti Bone, which I showed you a second ago. We're gonna use this to layer up all of the cloth and the shoulder pauldrons on the miniature. Exactly the same steps, exact same technique as on the powered armored guide. Like the gold before, this color will stick out like a sore thumb if you hit anywhere you're not supposed to, so be careful. Take your time. As you can see, my right hand pretty much stays in the same position all the time, and it's my left hand that moves around. There we have it. There's a layering done on the shafty bone. Super clean, super crisp. Just gotta take your time. Cadian Flesh Tone will be the paint to uh, layer up the skin. It's 
the good thing about painting warmer miniatures like Space Marines and stuff. They're such well muscled miniatures that uh, the definition provided by those miniatures shows you where the highlight should go pretty simply. All of those raised parts. Same thing on his face. We want to aim for those pronounced features. So tips of nose, tips of cheek, forehead, ears, those kind of parts. Now this is a basic infantry miniature. This isn't a character. So what we're going to do here is do a quick layering process with the Cadian flesh tone. And then we will actually throw a flesh tone wash over it in a minute. Um, just add a bit of extra definition to the miniature. And that will be the point where we will leave the skin. Obviously, if this was the High Marshal or anything like that, we would spend a little bit extra time, do a couple extra layers. But for basic infantry, I wouldn't bother. A layer of skin done. And like I said before, we're just going to add a little bit of definition back into the face with the Reichland Flesh Shade. I said a little bit too much, so I took a lot of it off my brush on the palette and then came back in and used what I'd already applied to spread around the miniature. Feel that just adds a bit of warmth back into it. You can see that I accidentally hit the shoulder pad there. Quick wipe my finger and it was gone. And there you go, that's the point where I will leave this skin at. Happy enough with uh, an infantry model painted it at. Blood Reaver Flesh is the color that I like to use to layer up the brown leather parts. Um, actually, the Power Armor Templar video that I did, it was the first time I used this technique, these colors. Um, and I think it worked great, so I will be using it a lot in the future. Okay, from there we're going back to Lead Belcher. Now that we've washed the miniature down, and this is a very uh, quick highlight to the metallics again. Last time with the layers is the highlight, so you're not trying to get all the panels, just the very raised areas. As you can see, I spent, what, three or four seconds there, and that's the gun highlighted. Around his belt buckle, the teeth of the chainsword again, the motor of the chainsword, and the hilt. That's pretty much all you have to do. It does not take long, but it adds a little bit to the miniature. And then obviously that Aquila across his chest. I use Lead Belcher to highlight this up. And all I'm doing is putting a dot of silver at the tips of all the feathers. And then a little few uh, dots around the skull in the middle. And a quick swipe across the top. And there's the before and after, as you can see, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. It's quite a staggering result with very minimal effort. Model's really starting to come together now. The fist on red is the color I'll be using to uh, layer up the casings on the weapon. You can't use normal one. I just had air to hand and the air one is actually like a pre-thinned one. It's pretty good. It gives pretty good coverage for an air paint. I know this looks like lipstick red now, like a really bright red, but uh, it does dry a lot darker, a lot more mute and looks great. And there's the gun casings all layered up. Next, we want to throw Griffhound Orange over the Martian Iron Crust on the base. This basically brings it close to the painting of the miniature side of things. We're now going to work exclusively on the base and get that finished up really quick. So Martian Iron Crust, Griffhound Orange contrast over that. And then we start the three stages of dry brushing. If 
first one is riser rust just add a little bit more orange into the uh the, the, the soil as you can see it get quite dull and this will just make it pop again not to go too heavy nice medium dry brush is perfect and by that i don't mean the size of the brush you use i mean the, the amount of paint you're transferring to the model or the base in this case as you can see I'm also dry brushing up the boots and lower legs with the same color that I'm using to base the miniature I will do this with every stage of basing and it just adds to that weathered worn torn beaten look on the boots next color is kindle flame This is obviously a lighter dry brush to the one we did before. And as you can see me going up the boots, like I said. And the last dry brush is Tyrant Skull. And you're going to give this a very light dry brush. Just adds as a really nice highlight. Hitting the boots. And the last step in a, any paint job is to tidy up the rim of that miniature. Just gonna quickly pop them off the handle. Jump over to Old Faithful, Abaddon Black. And we're gonna give this two thin coats around the rim of the base to darken it out again. And this just makes the model look a thousand times neater and tidier. It really gives it that completed look. When he's standing on the plinth he belongs on. And there we have it guys. With that video I hope you guys are more than comfortable um, pulling out your black templars neophytes and getting them painted up to a really nice tabletop standard in no time at all i'm really enjoying doing the black templar series a hell of a lot more than i thought i was going to and i will be continuing on with some of the characters and a vehicle so i do hope you stick around um subscribe to the channel to check out those um, and to see what i end up doing with the vehicles um, please drop me any questions you have in the comments below i will do my very best to get back to each and every one of you and if you like what you see here drop the video a like Thanks again for watching the video, guys. And remember, the plan is simple. We paint them all.